right, so today is our um, December garden talk. Katherine Johnston, our master food preserver, is doing our presentation on gifts from the kitchen. So take it away, Catherine. Today I'm going to show you how to make gifts from your kitchen. I am going to talk about uh, my experiences in the past and why this is something that I know a lot about. Um, I was a teacher for 38 years, taught home economics, and I uh, this was one of my units that I did every year with my high school kids. And we'd started in Thanksgiving and we ended the day before the holidays and the kids were tasting all of their gifts. So we went through some good ones and some bad ones. So when you consider what recipe you're going to do as a gift, um, you need to first of all think about the individual you're giving it to. Do they have dietary needs? Do they have um, uh, do they have special things they like? So don't make my last recipe for some people who do not like lentils. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyways, but um, these are some of the books that I own and there's a lot of them out there. Um, I have used uh, the Simply Homemade a lot. And if you see all the little uh, things, these are all the ones that I've actually already made in there. Um, this is another one that I liked a lot. Um, it's called uh, Company, uh, Companies Coming, Gifts from the Kitchen. Um, these two, if, so, if you're my friend, you know where I am. If you wanna borrow them, you can. And this last little one came from Joanne Fabrics and uh, it's called Holiday Jar Mixes. And two of them I'm going to do today. I'm going to warn you on the second thing to consider is make the recipe first. There are mistakes. There are mistakes in this book. So <laughs> anyways, that we'll talk about those. I have typed the recipes and at the end you can have access to them um, so that you don't have to be scribbling down all the, uh, you know, everything I'm doing. Um, they're gonna have the, for you to, to uh, print out yourself. Um, anyways, so besides look, looking at the individual who's going to get it, also consider the cost of the ingredients. Some of the uh, ingredients are so expensive that it's like, is this worth me buying it? Uh, can I buy it cheaper or whatever? So we'll get to a couple of those that come up. Um, also, when you consider the ingredients, some of them are rare that people ask for. In this book, they wanted one called uh, pepper, garlic, or garlic pepper. I did find it in the store for $5 for this little jar. And I looked at the ingredients. Number one was salt. I'm trying to cut back on salt. So why would I add something with more salt than garlic and pepper? So I altered the recipe. It is in there for you when we talk about it, um, when you come up to that. Also taste it to make sure it tastes good before you buy it, before you make it all up and you give it as a gift. And they say, you know, that was the worst thing I ever had. So um, anyways, so I have to tell you one of the recipes I didn't make up until last night and um, it smells delicious. Everybody can tell you that's in here that it is smelling really good. Um, but I don't like lentils either, but I made it for a gift for somebody and it does taste okay. And then the last thing is presentation of your gift. Are you just gonna put it in a Ziploc baggie? My sister told me that one of the people she works with um, every year goes around and gives a little plastic bag with a little bow on it with popcorn in it and some other little stuff. And it's like, okay, we can do better than that. And I'm gonna show you a popcorn recipe. Um, anyway, so those things start costing money when you start buying these little jars and these little boxes. Healthful hint, garage sales, perfect place to go, church bazaars. The Leroy Presbyterian Church had is having their final sale. I bought, when you see these jars, I bought all of them there. Uh, 50 cents or less, just saying, um, great place to go. So let's get started on the first recipe. And the first gift. So the first one I'm going to make is an Oreo muffin cookie recipe. This recipe was one of my students' favorite recipes. And after we made it, they would request it over and over again. said, so you can make this up at home anytime. So you know kids like Oreos. And um, so it's just a really simple one. Now, a package of cookies used to make two jars. Guess what? They've, even though the package size seems to be the same size, it's not as many cookies in there. So anyways, I'm just saying I cut it down to divide it in half. And so it still makes two. So even though the recipe says 20 recipe, uh, 20 uh, Oreo cookies, um, it's whatever is in the package divided by two. So it came out as 19. So the first step is to take the cookies and you crush them up. You can use a rolling pin if you want, but guess what? I can divide it up into little quarters just with my fingers. So um, this is something, again, that if you have children or grandchildren and you want to do something for Christmas and you want to make like mom a little gift, this would be a perfect 
little gift to, you know, make somebody. Um, so, so all I'm gonna do is bake up the 20 cookies and then I'm gonna add the other ingredients. Now this jar, if you can't find it at a sale, you can find it at your local Dollar Tree or Dollar General or Family Dollar, give them all credit for that. But um, it's one that has a flip top and don't ask me why, but this one with a flip top does better than the one that just has a ceiling jar. You can also use mason jars if you can find them. <laughs> so, we're almost done here. Gotta get all those cookies in. Now, I did give you two versions of this recipe. Um, one is the one that came with, uh, um, oh, and by the way, this was, this was found in a magazine, a news, newspaper, and I said, this would be a great gift in a jar. So I actually created into a gift in a jar um, by just figuring out what's the dry ingredients and what are the wet ingredients. So, um, so there's my 20 cookies. Now, it doesn't look like everything else is gonna fit, but it will. So the next ingredient is flour. And, it, and I've already pre-measured everything. So it's one in and three quarters cup of flour. And I'm just going to dump it in. And I have to say, this would be really great if you had one of those funnels or uh, those canning things, but I, I couldn't find it last night. So now all you keep doing is shaking down and that actually makes everything go in. It's gonna go through all those little crevices and um, forgot about the fact you guys are gonna hear the banging, sorry. So, so, so far, the only thing I had to go out and buy was the Oreos. Next ingredient is sugar, and it's a half a cup, and this one I have to measure. And then I'm going to put in a half a teaspoon of salt. And the last ingredient is a tablespoon of baking powder. This is all ready. And if I was actually giving this, I could tie it up with a little ribbon, put a tag on it, put the directions on how to make it. So the next part I'm gonna do is show you how to make it. Okay, so I pre-made one. And all I need to do is take my mix, and dump it in my bowl. Okay. So all my dry ingredients are together. You can stir them up if you think it needs to be. Um, but I actually know that I shook this up really, really well. Um, so then you're going to add in a little bowl, which I've already added my melted butter, um, which is a fourth of a cup of melted butter. It's the only fat ingredient that I could not reduce. So that is, you could change it to oil if you wanted to change it to oil. Then I'm going to add a third of a cup of light yogurt, raspberry. Why raspberry? Raspberry yogurt or raspberries and chocolate work really, really well together and it actually intensifies the flavor of the chocolate. So that's why I chose that. If you don't like raspberries, use vanilla or you can use the sour cream and all the fat that they, they actually tell you to put in. But this was one of my changes. Okay. Um, and then the next ingredient is three fourths a cup of, I use skim milk. And again, they used whole milk. So why add more fat and I don't need it? Um, and then you're supposed to add one egg. Well, the substitute for one egg is two egg whites. So that's what I'm gonna do. So there's all my liquid ingredients. Which I'm just gonna give a little stir to. And we dump them into that. And as all of you know, you do uh, stir it till just mixed. So. 
at the end of the program, we'll have these out of the oven and my special guests that are on the other sides of the room here can taste them and tell you how they are. <laughs> and gee whiz, somebody's all excited. <laughs> I have a feeling we'll have some of the other people in the other room stopping in too. <laughs> so Catherine, we did have a question. With mm -hmm. the salt that's already in, likely in the Oreos, is it necessary to add a whole teaspoon of salt? It was a half a teaspoon. It was half a teaspoon? Um, yes, it still is. I hadn't thought about that. Now, if you don't, if there are other things besides Oreos, there's a, a cookie without frosting. It's a little uh, chocolate wafer. Um, myself, I like that better because I don't, I'm not a frosting person, which, and by the way, the white part is the worst part for you to eat. So if you were going to eliminate something, eliminate the frosting. So anyways, I do have, I have this already greased and ready to go. And I'm just going to scoop in. Sure. Have you tried different flavors of Oreos? Uh, in this, no. Have I tried different flavors of Oreos uh, in, the, in, the in the past? <laughs> yeah. I like the birthday cake one, which would be really pretty, you know. Um, so I wonder, they have the red velvet. That would be really pretty for Christmas to do red velvet Oreos. All right, so I'm just going to throw this out there again. Mm -hmm. I guess it doesn't show up in the chat. I think I maybe did something. Um, we will, the recipes are posted on our CC website. Um, we'll have the link at the end again. And for everyone who registered, when I send you out an email that the YouTube video is posted, I will also do um, an attachment with Catherine's recipes. So you don't have to write everything down today if you don't want to, or if you missed something, um, we, can, we can get that to you. But they are gonna be on our CCE Genesee website. I believe they're actually already posted on the food and nutrition page. There's a little garden talk section. If I was home, I would take more time to divide this up and whatever. And since I'm not, you know, Martha Stewart and have this all somebody else doing it in the background. <laughs> okay. This is going into a 400 degree oven for, um, it says 20 minutes. I'm going to set it at 15 because I don't know this oven. The next one I'm going to do is so simple. Um, it is a ranch dip mix. And I'm sorry at the end, I won't have samples for my guests. And I won't have a few because I left the sour cream at home. <laughs> um, but anyways, I bought these cute little dishes and I was two different th thoughts about using them. But I thought, wow, well, how cute that afterwards, you know, I, I give the gift and they could use this for the dip. And you know, when you're setting up for a party, sometimes you don't have saran wrap, well, just a little cover. So it's super easy to pull away. And Lori, this will be a good one for our game night. Anyways, here is the gift. It comes out as a little packet, just like you buy in the store. And uh, anyways, so I have a bag to put all my seasonings and things in, which I'll fold down and get ready. But I'm gonna mix it all up in a bowl first. So um, anyways, the first one is a third of a cup of dried onion. Make sure when you buy the dried onion, um, it doesn't have salt added to it. Um, it's one of those things, again, just to watch out for. So it's, we start with a third. Now this makes many, many, you only use a tablespoon per um, dip, which I, when I, you'll see it on the recipe, I highlighted it so that, you know, don't add this to one cup of sour cream. That would be uh, very potent. So um, anyways, uh, and that was some of the mistakes that were made by my students in the past. So um, to the onion, I'm gonna add three tablespoons of um, parsley. And I have to tell you, I pre-measured that and now my container is empty. <laughs> so I can recycle that later on. And to that, it's gonna be three teaspoons of paprika. One. I used to make a Cajun uh, dip and my students loved it, especially the boys. And uh, oh my goodness. Um, and then we, we would go home with just this little packet and um, in their pocket, which is, as a school kid, it wasn't the best choice. So I'd like this much better to put it in something as a gift. Um, anyways, the next ingredient, which I'm omitting is one and one half tablespoons of sugar. 
And because I'm trying to cut back on my sugar, I omitted it. I didn't find it to be offensive to leave it off. If you like sweeter dips, then go ahead and add it. Um, the next one is ground pepper and is one and one half teaspoon, uh, tablespoons of ground pepper, which again, I found to be a lot and super hot. So I'm only gonna add the one tablespoon and not the one half. But again, it's to your liking if you like hotter, spicier things. Um, so, um, and then the uh, garlic powder is next. And I use, I'm not really pushing one over another, but I use Tastefully Simple Garlic Garlic. I like their product, so I'm using that instead. And it's just one tablespoon, which I always measure over something other than what you're putting it in. So if it spills, we're not gonna have too much. So there's that one. And the last ingredient is one, one and one half tablespoons of salt. And I cut it down to one teaspoon. So Catherine, if you are watching your salt, you can reduce amounts of the, mm -hmm. even this recipe even more. Oh yeah, taste. you could you could eliminate the salt altogether if you wanted to. Um, I just found that I wanted a little bit of salt in it. Um, but then again, I'm not a big potato chip person, so it's not like I'm eating a lot of this unless I have my game night, uh, which we haven't had in almost a year. So, anyways, uh, but I see my friend Lori is still here. Hey, Lori. <laughs> anyway, so you're going to stir this up, and then we're going to put it in the little bag. And again, if I had one of those little funnels, it would be super easy. Um, so I'm just going to, but this, this becomes the whole gift. If I was doing a whole lot of these, I would probably buy it in the big bulk um, at BJ's or whatever and buy those certain to cut on the cost. But if you're just making one, then what you have at home, unless you're a person that buys little ones for parsley, the parsley is the only thing that I tend to have a huge amount of. But then again, when we got to the last recipe, I actually went down in my basement. I have uh, grow, grow lights and everything going on and I have parsley and thyme and I have a little herb garden in the basement. And uh, so I went down and got that because guess what? The dried stuff was here because I already had it, everything ready. So I was like, oh, where's my parsley? Oh, it's a carpet extension. So yeah, I felt like half of my kitchen was here. Uh, Last night I was looking for things and it was not in my house. <laughs> okay, so this is the gift. All done. And what I did was I labeled it. I took a Tupperware label, but you could use a sticky note or whatever. And I labeled it ranch onion mix and I put the date so that the, whoever's receiving it knows how old it is, how fresh it is. Hmm. Not that I found anything really old in my cupboard while I was searching for things. Yes, I did. <laughs> um, so I have another one already done and we're on to the third one. And if you um, are one of those people that doesn't like total sour cream, you can substitute half sour cream, half um, mayonnaise. Um, and it does make a different thing. And you could also use the lower fat um, sour cream, which is what I tend to use. Okay. Next one. Oh, the next one. Some of the people here have already tried the next one. It is popcorn crunch bark. <laughs> So you're going to end up with, this is a gallon size jumbo bag from Hefty. And uh, let's just say it was full. I've been giving it out already. <laughs> so what am I going to, who am I going to give it to? And what am I uh, making as the presentation? Well, I have a couple crafting friends. And one of my crafting friends actually gave me this because I just thought it was so cool. So if you're a crafting person, a lot of times you have scraps. So it's a little trash can. So you had a little snack with your little trash can as the gift. And I know that there's another product out there called White Trash. Similar, you know, same idea. Um, I'm not sure where my friend bought it, but 
Um, anyway, so this is my, the variation. There are four variations that I have given you in the recipes. This one is variation cranberry pistachio mix. And it has, by accident, it has blueberries in it because I wasn't watching what I was doing. <laughs> And I added blueberries instead. And I'm like, uh, uh oh. So, anyway, so you would fill this up, seal it. And there's your gift. Or, again, found this at my little church sale. Um, you could fill up a tin. And I'm not going to do it because I forgot to bring the baggie, but I'm an avid person about putting a baggie inside of these things just because um, you don't know who's going to get into it the dog, the cat, whatever. So anyway, so that's the end result. And let me show you how simple it is to make. So, so you're going to need the biggest bowl you have in your house to make this. So, and this one is definitely kid friendly, in my opinion. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is take pretzels. And by the way, I bought a lot of groceries at either Aldi's or Dollar Tree. And these pretzels came from Dollar Tree. So anyways, all you do is break them up into little bits. And so I'm getting them out of the way first. And this is no particular order. The recipe will tell you an order, but you have to pop um, and get enough for eight cups of popcorn. Oh, yeah, I haven't popped popcorn in years. So that was just totally different. And I guess if I would buy an air popcorn pepper if I was going to do it. Anyway, so we have our one cup of pretzels that are broken up and our eight cups of popcorn. I did not add salt um, and I used minimal oil in making it. So, okay. Oh. Then you're going to add a cup of pistachios. And I am going to do a shout out to all these. It's right inside the door. They have these um, at the cheapest price. I did shop all over looking for the cheapest price because this was the expensive item I was talking about. If you're gonna do this gift, consider how much. This will make two um, batches. So it's one cup, which again, I pre-measured. And then we have the dry cream pieces. <laughs> Delicious, Catherine. Even if they were blue? Yes. <laughs> okay. I did get a bowl of popcorn earlier. <laughs> it's almost gone. So I can attest this is a good recipe. Okay. So I'm just kind of stirring this all up. And I've got to go get my chocolate. I have pre-tempered my white chocolate. And this one is going to be white chocolate. Now, um, can you tell, does it taste like uh, cinnamon toast crunch cereal? You've ever had that? Yeah. That's what it tasted like to me. It's because it has, it has cinnamon in the white chocolate. So at oh, this okay. point, if I wanted to, I could add cinnamon, but myself, I didn't like it. So this batch, I'm not putting in the cinnamon and it says optional. So it's one teaspoon of cinnamon that you would add to the chocolate. I gotta go get the chocolate. I don't think I would have realized that Catherine, if you hadn't set up. It was, it's good, but I like cinnamon. When you talked about tempering your chocolate, what does that mean? Tempering means that I, okay, so if you've ever done this before, if you've ever done chocolate, melted those little wafers, right. and by the way, don't use the whole package, um, so you're going to end up with some leftovers, um, so it's three-fourths of the package you're going to use up, so I melt it in small amounts, and I put it over boiling water, melt it very, very slowly, but this was on low over there, um, I started it whatever time I got here, I started boiling the water, and um, Anyway, so it could see how smooth it is. We want that to be really, really smooth. If your chocolate seizes up, okay, take it off, start again, and then you can add the chocolate back to, um, there are pot holders over there for you, um, if, if they're done. Um, anyways, uh, so tempering means to slowly heat it up or bring the temperature down. So it might start out hot. What I do is I take it off after I've got the first batch and I add the second half and it will temper it down. Oh, this is going to be a Christmas gift. So I decided we needed to make it more colorful. So if you have those little sprinkly things, these are holly berries and leaves. I'm going to sprinkle some in. And when it hits, if you ever had funfetti cake mix, this is the same thing that's going to happen. 
So little bursts of green and red are gonna pop through in your popcorn. So I'm going to take this and slowly dump it in and stir. And also gotta say is be, be prepared to get out the dust buster or whatever afterwards because popcorn for whatever reason, even though you don't see it, it goes flying through the house. <laughs> and so this is the one part I would say the kids have to stand back unless they have a big spoon, but um, cause it is warm. But so far the kids could measure out the pretzels and the, you know, they could help out with the popcorn, especially if they have the air popcorn popper. Now, this recipe came from Pampered Chef, and according to their directions, they have some kind of gizmo they sell that you can do it in the microwave. So I'm just saying that because that's where the recipe came from. Um, two of the recipes came from Pampered Chef today. It smells wonderful. Yes, it's very, you can smell the sugar in the air. <laughs> pre-greased my cookie sheet and this is an extra extra large cookie sheet um, oh if you don't have one of these uh two nine by 13 pans would work you could also wax paper but why put more garbage out there so i just figured um this would work So there we go. So I think I want to be on Catherine's gift to go through this one. <laughs> okay. Now, because it, to me it doesn't have enough of the coloring, I'm going to sprinkle on a little bit more. And you want to do that before the chocolate dries. Right. right? I'm going to actually stick this in the refrigerator so that um, I could take it home or share it with my friends here. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Oh my goodness. So, so it's a little messy, yep. but kids love mess. So I think kids would really enjoy making this one. Oh, okay, so this one's now, so number three. Woo. I do like this one. And I'm just gonna do the whole Cornell, um, no endorsements are implied by anything that we're showing today, so. I'm not endorsing, I'm just telling where you can find yes, things. We're, we, we're not endorsing through CCE or University. I have to put the disclaimer out there. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not a big advocate of any one store in this town, so or out of this town. Ooh, up next is no big brownie truffles. Oh yeah. This one is so easy. You again are gonna be like, oh, how did they come up with this? Again, this is a pampered chef uh, recipe. Um, thank you. You're going to be like, what? Um, seriously, the, the, um, what you're going to do is take a brownie mix. Now, it does matter. Originally, I bought this little bitty one um, at the Dollar Tree. Or oh, you can buy them other places, but that's where I got for a dollar. I'm like, oh, yay, I can cheap, cheap out. And I had to buy this one because the recipe calls for this one. However, the recipe says half it. What? Guess what? This is half. I could have used this one. So, but this one makes two recipes, so it ended up being fine. So I'm going to take the fudge brownie mix. Any brand will do as long as it's a fudge brownie mix. And dump it in. And then I have to add six tablespoons of melted butter. Realize this made 26, so you're not getting that whole tablespoon of melted butter. <laughs> the recipe claims it makes 18 to 20, but I'll explain why it made more. 
uh, in a minute. Anyway, so, so you're gonna mix this together and it goes together very simply. And, um, and then we're going to add, it says a third of a cup of chocolate chips. Well, when I started making it up last night, I decided that, hmm, it was hard to, to roll into balls, these little, these chocolate chips. So I changed it up and I'm going to add mini chocolate chips. And you're gonna love this. I'm gonna eyeball it. My friend Kim eyeballs everything, so this is for her. <laughs> Anyways, so we're gonna mix in the mini chocolate chips, which I figure will be easier to make into little balls. So Catherine, even though you switched from a third of a cup of regular size, would you still put a third of a cup of yes. in? Okay. Yes, Because you want the same, same amount. Yes. Then in the meantime, I have melting again, um, chocolate and I have melted um, those, the little melts, please. And then I added regular chocolate chips. Set that aside for now. And I'm going to go to the other part of it. This is so easy. So I have my chocolate um, already melted. Okay. I'm gonna take a baggie, fold it down. I first read the recipe, I thought, oh, I can do this a day ahead. No, you have to do it all together at the same time. And you'll see why in a minute. So, here goes my chocolate. And I do have regular bags, but why not just make it easy on myself? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is all I'm gonna do is drop some chocolate in each one of these. Um, this is an ice cube tray. And oh my, I bought this a year ago to make some chocolates and now I can't find that recipe. Um, but anyways, it's similar, but you filled up each one of these things with chocolate and then you uh, let it set, then you poured out the excess chocolate and you added it in. Um, you added in the filling and then you topped it off and scraped it. And it's like, now that I finally found these things, uh, I don't know where the recipe went to. <laughs> so anyways, so I'm just gonna keep filling. I'm just putting a little bit in the bottom of each one of these. I did not make a very big hole so that it wouldn't go really fast. And this is tempered to the point that I can touch is not too hot. So again, this is something kids could do and I'm sure they would have their fingers underneath the chocolate. Okay, so. And I'm just going to tap this. Now the next step, any kind of caramel will do, but this is thicker. That's, I wanted the thicker kind of um, caramel. So you uh, take this caramel and again, I'm cutting just a corner off and I pre put this in there for you. And I'm just going to put a dollop in the center of each one of these little things. And if you wanted to eliminate the caramel, you could. Um, if you wanted to fuss around with marshmallow, you could put a marshmallow in there or marshmallow fluff. And I do have these already made so I can show you because this will take time to harden up. Okay, so. There's that done. And then what you're gonna do is go back and you're going to scoop. I don't know how this is doing this. Of course, this is not working out today. And it could be, it's really, really warm in here. Anyway, so anyways, you're gonna make shape these into a little ball. And then all you do is you take it and you plop it inside and press it down. So it's gotta be a little bit smaller than the hole. Okay, I'm not going to do more of them because that's not quite right. I, mean, I think I know what's wrong. But anyways, um, so you'd finish this off. Okay, stick this in the refrigerator or the freezer. Either way, I did stick it in the freezer and it worked out really well. 
Now you're gonna see some missing. Hmm, I wonder why. <laughs> they were delicious. <laughs> Uh, don't eat them automatically out of the freezer, even though you're going to be tempted, uh, they're hard. <laughs> so what you're going to do is just stick your finger under. That's why this is so great. I don't know if you can see it better. Um, you just press push this up and these little things will pop right out. So what I did was I took one of the boxes I got at the store. Uh, when I say store, I should say the church sale. I put a little piece of wax paper in it and from your your normal store, Dollar Tree from this, these, uh, I got little papers and then I just lined this in here and put in, there's eight total, but I could paint more. Anyways, the other thing that I did, I had some extra and I didn't, I didn't have any room, but if you didn't have one of these and you wanted to do it, you can just shape them, eliminate, eliminate the uh, caramel part. And I rolled them in cocoa powder. So I don't know if you can see the cocoa powder. And then I dolloped a little bit of my melted chocolate on top and just went across the top. So it gave it two choices, one with caramel, one without. And so there we go. So Catherine, what's our next recipe? The next one is a soup mix. Oh, the soup, the lentils. Again, I'm gonna show you the results first. And this has been cooking all morning making the kitchen smell wonderful. This one is country herb lentil vegetable soup mix. Um, this one was the one that probably took me the longest to find all the ingredients. Surprisingly, the difficult ingredient was barley. First ingredient is one cup of this pasta. And this is where the recipe is incorrect. And in my opinion, um, they want you to add this pasta in with everything else. And if you did and you cooked it with that, you would not have pasta in there. You would have mush. So I actually am adding a paper bag, a plastic bag of me, and I'm going to measure it and put it in the bottom of the jar. Now, if you didn't want to use a plastic bag, you could also put in a, like a little divider or something of that order. So this is one cup of Multicolored pasta, what they said. I'm going to go right to um, the dried lentils. So it needs one cup. So oh, this one is, I'm actually making this one as a gift for a family member who is a vegetarian. So there is two versions that I put in the recipe listing, um, one for beef people and one for vegetarians. So um, if you two have a vegetarian family member. So. The next is um, dried split peas, which is one cup also. Like the lentils at home, there's just a little bit left. What am I supposed to do with just a little bit left? So the three biggest items are now in the jar. So uh, then the next ingredient is barley. I got to talk about barley for a minute since it took me forever to get it. Um, Goya makes a brand, uh, Quaker makes a brand, and Topps Full Circle makes a brand. Um, this brand has got other things besides barley in it um, and is three times as much. This one is the cheapest brand. I'm just telling you that the guy at the store was like, this is the one you want. And I'm like, and then also the consideration about this whole thing was lentils and peas and barley all take different amounts of time. This recipe did not tell you how long to cook it. It said, cook until vegetables are tender. Well, how long is that? Well, it took one hour and 15 minutes one hour to get the soup done and 15 minutes to add the pasta back in. So set your timer for one hour. So this is a half a cup, Oops, wrong measuring cup.
Now, the uh, next ingredient is um, bouillon. And they say bouillon gr granules. I calculated it out because I needed vegetable ones for um, the person receiving this. And this is the brand I found. It's Herbox. And I found that five little cubes work. So I'm just sticking those in. Unwrapped, Unwrapped yes. And this is also why you're see I omitted salt from this. The bouillon cubes, either way, beef or vegetable, are very high in sodium. So the recipe calls for uh, two and a half teaspoons of salt. I totally omitted it. Now, you could tell the person who's receiving it, they might want to salt it if they're a person who needs more salt. Minced onion is three tablespoons. Parsley. So dry parsley is two tablespoons. And this, this is what I added into the soup last night. I added it fresh because I didn't have my parsley was here and not at home. So isn't that just so pretty there on top? Like oh. okay. I have to say I left my oregano home. It's a half a teaspoon, so I'll have to add that in when I get home. The garlic powder is a half a teaspoon. One bay leaf. Let's find the best looking one. Okay. Now, just to make, you might tell these, it's not in the recipe, but when they're done cooking, you do take the bay leaf out. You don't serve uh, bay leaf in your uh, so That's all done. Peel it, and again, I would probably put ribbon around it, and I've put a tag that'll tell how to make it. Um, and I used to say it's, this is super simple. It takes three quarts of water, a half a cup of celery, a fourth of a cup of carrots, and one pound of diced um, tomatoes. So really simple for them. And if you wanted to give a gift of, of tomatoes with it, uh, a, a saucepan, something like that, uh, might go along as a really nice addition for the for the gift. Um, or soup bowls even. So I'm done. This nice. this plate that I have here again was one of those finds and it's like a Thanksgiving plate. But if you wanted to give, instead of giving the jars a gift, if you are giving this to a non-baker, you could give these muffins um, as you can see. Oh yeah. <laughs> are you ready for yours? Oh sure. Yeah. Can I give it the broken one? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we have to taste test. <laughs> you have to hear. <laughs> I do have a question on the soup. Who am I talking to? Okay, it's, okay. Um, does the soup freeze well after you make it? Well, I got to tell you, because I have five containers of this soup at home. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm freezing it. <laughs> I'm, also, okay. I'm also having somebody over for lunch. She knows who she is out there. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah. I have to say, this is definitely one of those recipes. Make sure your friend, whoever you're giving it to, likes lentils. Oh, and, gotcha. And um, well, and one of my friends would have eaten it, but she actually is allergic to barley. So uh, I was like, oh, great. And I can give it to her. So I can eat one bowl of it, but then it's like, what am I going to do with it? So yeah, I'm freezing it. And, uh, okay. Thank you. Muffins are delicious. <laughs> okay. Very good. So from the Yay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give you a round of applause from everybody out there. Merry Christmas, everybody. And I think I think all the chat things are just thank you, thank you, thank you. Great program, Catherine. Thank you. All right, thanks everybody.